piece of shit. Just a little bit of that would be the cost of meeting with the informant. In other words, I give the compensation earmarked for the informant to you first. Well, it helps that the details of this deal are so clear-cut. He certainly has something else for being able to brazenly state his ulterior motive for it like this. Rather than in him doing this out in the kindness of his heart, everything was a lot clearer if he was being compensated for this deal. I felt that he was the type of man who was good at, at these backroom dealings. Don't misunderstand me, please. It's not me who needs the money, it's the informant, okay? Well, in regard to the payment, I'll be handling the money. <laughs> when do you want it? Right now would be good. If you don't have it on you, tomorrow works as well. I pulled out a wallet that was different from my personal one. The price was pretty much fixed depending on what kind of information I was paying for. In this in case, the payment was up front. Also considering the fact I didn't know what kind of info I would get, I shouldn't pay too much. When I suggested that, Oishi stre stretched out his hand and tightly grasped the contents of the wallet. What the fuck? At times like this, it's best you not be so stingy. It's alright, it's alright, I won't- it won't go to waste. I understand, I won't be stingy. And? What kind of information are you looking for? Depending on what- on what you want, now we approach this will probably change. You swear you won't spread this information to anyone else? Oishi. I can't swear as much. I'm the same as you. I can't withhold information obtained during the course of my duties. Ugh. I fucking hate Oishi. He's such a slimy piece of shit. It's a fucking rat. He really is. Oh, 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 I've got it, I swear. Nothing here gets said anywhere else. On top of that, thanks to you, I can pay back what I owe from my Mahjong debts. In any case, I won't break a promise that involves money. <laughs> I was still unsure if I should trust him until the very last moment, but in the end I broke down. Oishi wasn't the type of guy I could trust 100%, but there was no mistaking he had access to underground information networks. In other words, in order to accomplish my mission swiftly, I needed this cooperation. His cooperation. I set my resolve. I'm investigating whether or not the Onagafuji Defense Alliance is related to a certain incident. Certain incident? There's a possibility that the Minister of Construction in you guys is being coerced by someone. Saying there's a possibility is kind of a roundabout way of putting it. It appears there's a mole close to the Minister. And due to that mole, the minister has been monitored quite thoroughly and was seemingly forced to accede to their threats right away. None of them has report was reported to us or the police. I see. So that's why you're saying there's only a possibility he's being coerced. In that case, isn't it a little strange? If the minister didn't report this to anyone, how did you guys know about this incident? If we didn't spy on the minister's private life, we would have never found out. I don't think we have to provide that explanation to the informant, so I'm omit omitting it. Oishi had apparently caught on and quietly chuckled when I refused to explain. I see. There's a spy close to the minister, so public safety made it a highly classified investigation. That certainly isn't a very amicable story, is it? If this matter becomes pu became public, not only would this affect the minister's political career, but the possibility of there being a shift in the political landscape is extremely high. If the perpetrator's aim is indeed that, then this would develop into a very grave situation. Well, with the government having developed projects over the, cent the country, they've bu butted heads with quite a few people. It would make... It would take much wrongdoing for the left-wing parties to suddenly garner mo more support. We're currently investigating what demands are being forced on the minister. But at least we have a good idea of how he's being treated. How? The minister's grandson was kidnapped. They're denying it, but judging from where he was last seen, it's believed he's already been over 72 hours since the kidnapping. So three days. If there were just another ransom money, this would have settled down by now. This would have been settled by now. 
And maybe this isn't for monetary gain. The possibility that they're forcing the minister to do something politically is extremely high. That's something we just can't con consent. Can't, we can't consent to. So then, the Onokofuchi Defense Alliance was listed as one of the possible perpetrators. That is correct. Kidnap the minister's grandson and demand the cancellation of the dam project. Hmm. What do you think, Oishi? From your point of view, do you think that's a possibility? Oishi seemed to ponder the idea for a while. The section chief at the regional officer had, immediate, had responded immediately with, it's possible. Oishi will say yes. However, Oishi was this well informed about the matter, was hemming and hawing. Finally, just a little bit, he said something that was really just a little bit strange. This was before the Meiji era, you see. This area wasn't named Hinamizawa back then, it was called Onogafuji. Ah, oh, this is just what I heard from my grandmother. This topic was so completely and suddenly unrelated to the subject of the kidnapping of the minister's grandson that I was slightly taken I was taken aback slightly. Onogafuji. Oh, so that's why they're called the Onogafuji Defense Alliance. You see, the village of Onogafuji was said to be inhabited by demons that empowered humans. Even now, it's believed that the blood of these demons partially, partially courses through the veins of the villagers. Again, I'm glad we get to learn about this again. <laughs> but it's better than Takano. It's better than Takano. Wait, did I get that? Yeah, whatever. Need to make sure I read that. Demons that devour humans? Oh, Ishii, what are you saying? It's information. I got a lot from you just now. A little too much. In exchange, I'm giving you a little freebie. Oishi finally smiled, but it didn't seem like he was fooling around. Please continue. You see, these human-devouring demons, uh, normally they were rever revered as Taoist transcendents, and lived tucked away from the rest of the world. But they ate people after all, so apparently they go to the villages in the foothills and regular- and reg- in the foothills regularly- God damn it! Regularly, and abduct their prey. They used to call them that being Demon Away or Onakakuchi. Demon Away. It was the first time I heard such a peculiar phrase. However, I felt something strangely, slightly ominous from this horrifying tale of demons abducting people in order to eat them. Look, you know how there's the common phrase spirited away? When people suddenly go miss missing one day, they call it that. When the same thing happens around here, they call it being demoned away. How does that old tale relate to the matter at hand? Oh no, there's no direct relationship. I'm just making some small talk here. It's just... Kathump, kathump. The car shook. At some point, the gravel road had changed to a paved one. Oh, we're going back to the city. It's just... just what? That around here, the phrase demon away is somewhat of a code for disappearances and kidnapping. I just thought I'd mention that. I don't know if that has anything to do with the kidnapping of the minister's grandson. Well, there's no deep meaning behind it. It's just that there's... there's that little bit of history. Onokakushi. Human-eating demons coming down the foothills and abducting their prey. Then in order to cancel the dam project, that threatening to submerge the village they lived in, did they demon away the minister's grandson? Then had they already made an example out of the minister's grandson and eaten him alive? No. <laughs> it's a bit of an interesting old tale, isn't it? If you set foot into the, the villi demon's village without reason, you'll promptly be captured and eaten alive. So don't go near Onokafuchi. Kids these days wouldn't have these superstitions, would they? Even amongst the older folk in Okinomiya, born in the Meiji era, there's quite a few people who wouldn't heed these warnings. Hinami's whole village was feared by the people in the area. I recalled that piece of information I heard from the Prefectural Public Safety Division. In that case, we're in the boonies out here. It's kind of what the what uh kind of bleh, bleh. 
it's kind of expected that there'd be some superstitions suspicions around. Nah, nah, nah. Somebody from Tokyo like you, Akasa, probably couldn't even begin to imagine it, could you? The man-eating demons, uh, as the price of vi for violating the sanctity of their village, kidnapped the minister's grandson and swallowed him whole. That ludic ludicrous idea flew through my head. It was so absurd I was half disgusted with myself. Oishi was just teasing me. Stupid. It was re all really so stupid. Come to think of it, by then I may have already been seized by the curse of that dubious village. For me to realize that would take a little more time. Is that the end of the first little thingy? I think it is. Oh god. Look. I think it's like 8 million tips. Yeah, 8 million tips. Oh god. So many tips. Time to have fun reading a bunch of tips. Oh god. I'll I'll save the really positive one for the end. Here's him. Uh, let's go with that one. Fuck it. The world is filled with people blessed with relationships. Of course, that doesn't mean that everyone is connected to each other. It's obvious that on the other side of the planet, there are people laughing and crying who can't possibly have an effect on you. However, in the extremely limited community of the neighborhood, that sort of connection is just a matter of fact. It's quite possible that a single remarkable event could have massive consequences inside a small community. If you were to increase that in scale, a perfect stranger on the outside of the globe, on the other side of the globe, might become enough of a legend that to have an effect on our lives. Well, it's not always that way. Like I said at the beginning, the links between people basically aren't that relevant in the grand scheme of things. Whether some household nearby is having steak or croquets doesn't matter to me. When I put on my shoes, it doesn't matter to anybody whether I put the right one on first or the left. This much of the, uh, the average person can understand. But actually, in reality, this is the truth. The bonds between people are quite well defined. It's not just a matter of distance or of being far or near. For example, let's say person A's actions have some effect on me. Even then, person B's actions could have absolutely no consequences on my life. The reverse also holds true. Just because my actions affect person A, that doesn't mean that they affect person B as well. Let's put it bluntly. If the bonds between people are like gears in a machine, if that gear that represents me meshes with some people, but it isolates from o but is isolated from others, there are some who would try argue against this. Those people would bring up the example of gears in a clock. Each gear indeed only directly meshes with one or two others. However, if you rotate one gear, the one next to it is moved, which connects to the next one, and the next one, in the end all the gears are moving. There is a logic behind this, more than enough to convince the average person. Why is the argument convincing? The answer is simple. The relationship between people and are ambiguous and can only be described conceptually. How the gears are connected and how their movements are chained together can't be used as a fundamental explanation, so it throws a wet blanket on that argument. So for the people that like that explanation, I'll use the example of a clock again to refute it. First of all, to say that this world is a singular clock would be wrong. That is, there isn't only one clock. There exists many clocks in this world, each counting their own time. If you think about it, the idea that this world is just one big clock is the height of arrogance. Even if you use the analogy of gears to explain human relationships, when, then you should be able to ex explain it using an analogy of multiple clocks unrelated to a single gear. Neighbors A and B. A is a gear in the same clock as me, so it's best to remain civil. B is, in a, is a gear in a different clock, so he doesn't really matter to me at all. That's the kind of clear distinction I'm talking about. You want to say I'm being fa fallacious. Fallacious, was it? Yeah, fa fallacious. Sure. Then let's change the analogy to something more familiar so you can understand. You're 
probably heard the phrase, a fire on the opposite shore sometime in your life, no? No. For example, if your neighbor's house was on fire, you'd probably try and help put it out, wouldn't you? I... Depends how much I know him. If I don't know him at all, fuck him. I don't give a fuck. Not my house. It would be awful if the fire spread and burned down your own house, after all. I'd just make sure it would make sure my house is safe. That's all I'd care about. But if that fire was in a town on the opposite side of a river, would he still go out of your way to help? Nah, hell no. You wouldn't, would you? Even though it would be the wrong thing to do, there's no way the fire could spread to your own house. Even if it turned into a huge conflagration. Conflagration. Sure. There's no relation between the house that will spread fire to yours and those that won't. With these basic examples, you could you should be able to see the difference between gears that are and aren't related to your own. Having said that, there's still a lot of, to think about, even without a river, river to divide it. After all, it's not a spatial, pro, spatial pro, problem, like being on the other side of a river, is it? The only counter-argument I'll have, which it was probably the internet, that's the only difference. It's bringing people in a way together and connecting people in a way together that's never been seen before in reality in human history and at all people would experience this with phones in the telegraph and all but this but it is on a completely different level that how many people are interconnected now hell all the people that will watch this video i probably will never meet you in my life though i would love to meet you guys actually believe it or not but the odds of me meeting someone who watches my video is one in approximately seven billion. The odds of that happening is extremely low. But, me making this video is a gear inside social media. People who watch it get connected to this video. Everyone who says watch this video is then connected in some way, whether they know it or not. And you can't deny that fact. So the internet, YouTube itself, creates this area that changes the argument that you don't even need gears in a clock you just have the internet of connected people comment chains all people that probably don't know each other they're still working together on those gears they're probably across an ocean they're still working in that same area it's different the car had stopped but he didn't know it know any more than that. Not, for not only was he blindfolded, but locked in the trunk of the car. Oh, this is the kid. How could people become this powerless just by being robbed of their sight? He was absolutely wouldn't have known this without experiencing it firsthand. He soon realized it was pointless to try and undo his bonds, with the confines of the truck quickly be making him lightheaded. He had no choice but to let it, this mild torture dull his senses. That's why when the cop car stopped and the unpleasant vibration ceased as the engine was killed, he couldn't help but delude himself that he was being set free, even though that nothing had been resolved in reality. Of course, he was soon re removed from that delusion. He strained his ears when he heard one of the men who had abducted him, and an older man he was, at, he was hearing for the first time strike up a conversation. Nice to see you. The chick is in the trunk. Oh. Oh, God. He struggled so much that... What? The chick? You mean the kid? The child? The fucking chick? Weird. Weird. Uh, unless that's like a different way of saying child? A chick? Oh, you do. Oh, oh, oh. Baby, baby bird chick. Baby bird chick. Makes sense. If that's what they were going for. He's exhausted now. So much that he's probably exhausted right now. But there's no, not a mark on him. Just as you ordered. Ah, oh, must have been a handful. The trunk opened, letting in the bla uh, blast of fresh, cool, cool air. 
Even though up until just now, he had been thinking about getting out of that stuffy trunk when it was actually open, he suddenly became uneasy. Even enough so that he wished that the lid of the trunk would once again close, separating himself from them. Sudden, suddenly somebody stroked his head. Weird. Of course, since he was blindfolded, he couldn't tell if the hand was petting him or simply evaluating how easy it would have been to remove his scalp. Unable to tell the difference, he, he could only freeze as he imagined the worst case scenario. Poor little bugger. You're shaking. Just stay calm for a bit. The older man said that kindly as he gently stroked the boy's head. This must have been real tough for you. But you see, your Gramps is a nice man. You'll, uh, I'll play, uh, soon enough. What the f- What is this fucking words? Oh god, it's so broken. Having heard nothing about the average standard dialect his whole life, the older man's distinct enunciation left a deep impression on the boy. But he had no idea what he was saying. For your gramps to register as meaning your grandfather took a while to process. Eventually, the hand that was stroking his head loosened the blindfold. Can't keep his eyes covered. If he splits his face open, it'll be bad. Hmm, and with the... We might as well take out the gag. You can't breathe like that. What the f... What the fuck is these words? It's so bad. What is this? It'll be trouble if he yells. Leave him to us. Jeez, you guys don't know how to treat somebody. The main family said no rough stuff. You better remember that well. Yeah, we won't do anything stupid. As long as the kid cooperates, that is. The man's ha a hand prodded, uh, prodded roughly and repeated repeatedly at the boy's head. A rough hand unlike the infectionate one that had been stroking his head before. Just stay cooperative. If you struggle, there's no guarantee that will happen. That clenched tree... Threat was literally beaten into his head. Fuck. God, I hate that fucking accent. A record of opening remarks? Chairman, members of the party, congratulations are due as we are celebrating 25 years since our founding. These past 25 years have been seen much growth in the prefecture. And once quiet scenery of nothing but fields, now has seen the opening of a new store for the bullet train. And within the development of the highway, we've seen the rebirth of a modern city bursting with youthful energy. We've reaped the benefits of a new businesses and industry. And with the special reverence and residence of the prefecture here for half her time on her traditions. History and culture, business and industry... With these ideas and ideals in harmony, they have accomplished in growing their city into one of Japan's foremost metropolises. Of course, the development of the prefecture couldn't have happened without the growth of the party. We are resolved to see every one of our campaign promises to fruition. Reaching our targets definitely and exp expediently like arrows fired from a bow. And then com completely collapsing on the ground. Because that's how the trajectory goes. But let's not bring up about the part where it just kind of just goes to the bow, just bows out and falls over. With these arrows as the fundamental basis of the party, our members have sought to pierce the obstructions preventing the happiness of the residents of the prefecture. But I do believe that everybody here is unlike an ordinary arrow. While being as unfaltering and straightforward, we have not neglected in seeking solutions that confirm the, to the, conform to the current day and age while also keeping an eye on the future. An arrow once loosed can only fly to its destination. Everybody here, however, is no simple arrow. Even once loosed from the bow without neglecting our studies, while employing new methods and n implementing more effective and flexible ideas, thus being able to change trajectories mid-flight, we are magical arrow arrows. The modern age marches ever forward. Sometimes it marches faster than the time taken for, from planning to execution. The following part was not in the script. It is thought to have been ad-lived ad by the minister. For example, there have been recently been numerous problems with the Hinamizawa power plant project. 
rather than forcing through this project solely because it was decided upon by the government, it is necessary to reflect on and adjust to the ever-changing needs of the residents, the region, and the next generation. The protests by the local residents that surround the Hinamizawa Dam, these are also the will of the people of the prefecture. If you feel there is no need to listen because the project has already been finalized, then you do, do, you do nothing more than shed a poor light of Japan's post-war democracy. The following is as per the script. For the lasting happiness of the citizens of Japan and the residents of the prefecture, please consider these policies thoroughly. I believe, however, if we have all gained something from the flexibility and foresight of the party, I've taken up much of your time. However, allow me to say the following to celebrate the 25th anniversary of our founding. Chairman, members of the party in attendance, thank you very much for today. From the opening remarks of the party prefectural forum and 25th anniversary celebration. Interesting. That could have been the minister, like, saying we need to stop the damn project. And that's probably what the Sonozaki's told him to do. And that's why it, it believed to be ad-libbed. But he is really coerced into saying that. Gotcha. Phone call with Yuki. I, I wanted to end on the happier good notes. Oh, really? It's tough when it's such a sudden assignment. Please be careful. Where are you headed? You're already there? Huh. Whenever I headed out on an assignment, she would ask me where. Not just Yuki, but anyone who would have asked the same question. If I was a cold place, she would urge me to pack a thick jacket. If it was far, she would warn me to be careful on the drive over. It was just a normal, everyday concern that led to asking such an obvious thing. I felt sad that I couldn't answer such a run-of-a-mill question. Sorry, it's something that you can't talk about, isn't it? Just please be careful. Sorry, Yuki. At some point, you start apologizing right away. Even though when we, you first started your job, you were all gung-ho about it. <laughs> Yuki laughed as though she had realized something. At first like this, Yuki had the magical power to see right through me. No, that's just fucking women around men. It's already been quite a while since I was admitted to the hospital. Are you finally getting lonely? Oh, don't- uh, God damn it. What? Which one? Since I was admitted to the hospital, are you fine? Maybe? It, it could be either one on that one. I'm confused because it, it kind of jumped uh, different persons there. Don't tease me. I'm too old to get lonely. <laughs> oh, really? You actually like to be dotted on, don't, don't you? Doted on, don't you? Don't you start getting a little faint of heart when I'm not around. <laughs> ah, jeez. I can see that little, the little devil horn sprouting from your head right now. You've always been like this. You can't hide it. You can't hide it. If I don't play with you, you get all lonely. I can hear your tail wagging over the phone. <laughs> this side of Yuki wasn't something you could guess existed from sensing her usual modest behavior. It was something that she didn't show to anybody else but me. Normally, I'd poke, I'd poke her to hide my embarrassment and bring an end to the conversation, but I couldn't do that over the phone. Of course, Yuki was clever. She was teasing me because of that. <laughs> I wonder when I figured out that giving you grief was this much fun. Give me a break. In any case, it's good to hear you so lively. I know, right? Did I cheer you up? I had Yuki call. I had called Yuki to keep her from being lo feeling lonely when she was by herself in the hospital room. Of course, that was nothing more than a pretense that I, being shy, had come up with. It seemed that Yuki had long since seen through the act. Yeah. Please phone again. When I'm not feeling up to it, I'll, talk I'll get my father to talk with you. Although, if you're talking with my father, I get the feeling that you'll be st standing at attention on the other side of that line. <laughs> for, a little, for a while longer, Yuki kept teasing me without letting me in the call. That's fine by me. Fuck it. No! No! Don't end it now! No! Damn. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> I recorded for a while. Good god. Uh, I think I'm gonna wrap it up here. Thank you guys for watching. 
for chapter four, the last of the question arc, and it's, I've already gotten one answer, thank god, this should be an answer, a semi-question, semi-answer, because I got one question answered, that was bugging me, so that's good, thank you guys for watching, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, share the videos around, all of them, fuck it, I don't care, post them everywhere, fucking put it into your local Walmart, uh, good old, good old Walmart, just put it there, everyone loves the Walmart, anyway, anyways, thank you guys for watching, stay tuned for next episode, where hopefully, actually I probably should save in before turning this off, <laughs> but stay tuned for next time, and... Hope you guys have a wonderful day.